continue um, with uh, section 1.3 on the curvature of connections. So as a way of introducing where curvature comes from, uh, I want, just want to remind you about um, commuting of partial derivatives of uh, real functions. So let's suppose x is a manifold and f going from x into the reals uh, is a smooth function. Um, uh, and let's also suppose that uh, x upper 1 up to x upper n uh, are uh, local coordinates, local smooth coordinates on some open set in X, though mostly are <coughs> local really means on some open set for me, uh, local coordinates on X. Uh, so then, well, the second partial derivative is d2f uh, dxi dxj uh, is equal to the second partial derivative d2f by dxj dxi. Um, so in other words, uh, so partial derivatives uh, d by dxi uh, and d by dxj commute. As you know, provided f has enough smoothness, if it has two continuous derivatives, let's say, but I'm always working with smooth functions. <coughs> um, okay, now in differential geometry, it's kind of bad style to choose coordinates uh, when you don't need to. Uh, so instead, uh, or alternatively, in coordinate free notation, um, uh, if, let's say, V and W are vector fields on X, then, well, we can write it in terms of the derivative in direction V of the derivative in direction W of F minus the derivative in direction W of the derivative direction v of f. Well, so you might think that would be zero, but actually it's not. There's an extra term. It's the derivative in direction brackets v comma w of f, uh, where this uh, here is the uh, Lie bracket of v and w. So one basic operation is if you have uh, two vector fields, V and W, you can form a, a third vector field, brackets V, comma W, which involves the derivatives of both V and W. Um, so, and you can kind of check this just by using the form leaf of uh, V and W here. So what's really going on here is that, well, this derivative here, it involves derivatives of, the second derivative of F, but it also involves the first derivatives of F and derivatives of W in the direction V, um, and this thing again involves derivatives of V in the direction W, uh, and so this term on the right is it's kind of encoding the, the, the bits of this which are first derivatives in F and first derivatives of V and W in directions W and V. Um, so, so then uh, we can take, if you like, V is partial by dxi, and W is partial by dxj, because the coordinate derivatives are actually examples of vector fields, um, and then the Lie bracket of d by dxi and d by dxj is zero. So, um, so then, in that case, this formula reduces to that formula because this right-hand side becomes zero if v is d by dxi, 
w is d by dxj. Okay, um, so perhaps we'll also say where curly L v of f is v dotted with df um, is the derivative of f in the direction v. Okay. Right. So um, now let's suppose uh, that um, E over x is a vector bundle. And um, Nabla is some connection on E. Um, and S is a section of E. Um, this is a section. Okay, so we can ask if this picture here still works. Um, whether uh, partial derivatives of S using Nabla. So Nabla is not natural. Nabla is a, the connection is a choice we have to make for our vector bundle. Uh, we can ask whether partial derivatives of S use Nabla commute or not. So that is, um, well, do we have, well, so the analog of uh, this thing here would be nabla in the direction d by dx i of nabla in the direction d by dx j of s equals nabla in direction d by dx j of nabla in direction d by dx i of s um, for local coordinates like that or um, uh, alternatively we could say nabla in direction v of nabla in direction w of s minus nabla in direction w in direction nabla in direction v of s minus what well, equals nabla um, Square brackets v comma w of s, um, and perhaps we'll give uh, these equations uh, numbers star one, star two. So this is what it would mean for the partial derivatives uh, to commute for connections as well as for functions. Um, and the answer is that, no, these, these aren't true in general. So, uh, in general, star 1 and star 2 are false. They're actually true if and only if the connection is what's called flat. Um, and the curvature is some geometric quantity, curvature of nabla. Uh, which is R of Nabla, or just R. This is a section of, well, I shall write it as end of E tensor lambda 2 of T star of X. So end of E is just E tensored with E star. Um, so, but I'm thinking about this as the, the bundle of endomorphisms of E of linear maps from E to itself. Um, so, we're going to define uh, an element of this, uh, this uh, sections of this big vector bundle. Um, so, this measures uh, whether uh, partial derivatives. using uh, Nabla commute. 
So all partial derivatives will commute if and only if r is equal to zero. Uh, and it's uh, so there is a unique um, such uh, r of nabla um, such that um, r of nabla dotted with brackets s tensor uh, v tensor w uh, is equal to um, nabla v brackets nabla w of s minus nabla of w brackets nabla v of s minus nabla of v bracket of v and w of s um, and this has to be true for all um, vector fields v and w and sections s in gamma of e. Okay, so the right hand side here is a section of the vector bundle e. Um, so we're starting with a section s of e. We differentiate in direction w, then we differentiate in direction v. Uh, everything here is in e. Uh, so here, well, this lies in end of e tensor uh, lambda 2 of t star uh, of x. Uh, that's in e, that's in, these are both in t of x. If you like, you can swap, you can anti symmetrize them. You can write v tensor w minus w tensor v. Doesn't make much difference. So this dot here means that you um, uh, you contract you contract the lambda two t star of x with the t x tensor t x using the dual pairings. So those just reduce to functions. Um, and then uh, here you um, we basically apply the end of e to the e. Well, that's kind of e tensor and e star. So you kind of you contract together that factor of e containing the s part with the e star here to give you uh, another e. Um, so then. This dot here uh, contracts all that lot together to give you a section of E, which can then be equal to the section of E on the right-hand side. Um, <coughs> okay, so it's a horrible formula. <coughs> What's important um, uh, is that the right-hand side That involves well the zeroth and the first and the second derivatives of s because we're okay we're, we're we're taking s we're differentiating it once twice here once twice there only once there um, whereas the left hand side involves only the zeroth derivatives. Of s. Okay, so the okay, so this is the right-hand side is kind of special in that a lot of it is cancelled out. So uh, the second derivative, uh, well, so, so in these the second derivative parts of s come only in these two things, uh, and this anti-symmetrization of the v and w has had the effect of cancelling out the second derivative parts of s. Okay, so if you just if you only had the first two terms, then you would have been left with some first derivative parts of S, but then this third term here cancels out all of the first derivatives in S, so the, the right-hand side has managed to cancel out, you know, it, if, if you've been writing this in coordinates, you'd expect to write to have something of the form, you know, A times the sec first derivatives of S, well, A times the second derivatives plus B times the first derivatives plus C times the zeroth derivatives, where A and B and C have some kind of generalized matrices of functions. 
So all of the first and derivative, all of the first and second derivatives on the right-hand side is cancelled out. What's left is only a zeroth derivative term, uh, a pointwise linear term, and that's what the curvature does. Okay. So if you'd written down some random expression here, then it wouldn't have worked because you would have still been left with some derivative terms which uh, are not accounted for on the left-hand side. Okay. Um, so. Well, uh, in uh, index notation, uh, I'd write R is R alpha, beta, K, L, where the alpha and the beta are, uh, well, E indices. Well, so the beta, or the beta is, is really an E star, as it's lower. Uh, so the somehow upstairs indices represent E or Tx, downstairs indices represent E star or T star of x, and the K and the L are T star of x indices because they're lower, and, and because it's, it's a two-form, it's an end of E value two-form, um, because of this exterior thing here, that means that our alpha, beta, K, L is minus r alpha beta l k, meaning that if you swap round two indices downstairs, uh, these two indices, then you change the sign. Uh, and that's obviously true on the right hand side. If you swap over v and w, then these two terms swap over with the minus sign, and you change the sign of the, the bracket vector field there. <coughs> okay. Um, uh, and then we can we can rewrite <coughs> this equation in index notation as uh, uh, R alpha beta K L S beta V K W L is equal to V K tabla K brackets w to the l, uh, nabla l s to the alpha, minus w to the l, nabla l brackets v k, nabla k s to the alpha, uh, minus brackets v comma w, let's give this a different index, m, nabla m s to the alpha, uh, and actually, you can do some cancellations here. Um, no, we won't do that. Sorry. Okay. Right. Um, right. So the connection Nabla is called flat if R is zero everywhere. Um, so, so then nabla is flat um, if and only if uh, locally on x, meaning that you can cover x by sufficiently small open sets in which the following is true. Locally on x, um, there exist uh, trivializations um, E is isomorphic to X cross R to the K. So this, this in general won't be true globally on the whole of X, but what, what I mean is that you can choose covers of X by open sets U such that E restricted to U is isomorphic as a vector bundle with u cross r to the k for some u open set in x, um, which identify nabla with um, partial differentiation curly d, that's just partial differential of 
maps x into r to the k. Okay, so if you have a trivialization of your vector bundle, if you've identified E with x cross r to the k, you can identify sections of E with smooth maps from x into r to the k, and then you can take ordinary partial deriv derivatives of those, ordinary differentiation, just using the usual d of functions. Um, okay, so this, this is a non-trivial theorem. It, come, it follows from, I think, the Frobenius theorem. Uh, so it's actually, so one direction is easy. Uh, if, if, you can ident if you can trivialize it um, and then partial different, because partial de derivatives commute, you'll see that the curvature is zero. Uh, the converse, that if the curvature is zero, then the thing is locally uh, trivial. Um, that's, that's a non-trivial fact from kind of fact about PDEs, really. Okay. Um, So in coordinates, um, if um, well, gamma, alpha, beta, k are uh, Christoffel symbols, for nabla, so that is if we choose some open set, uh, and on that open set we choose coordinates on the base x, and then we choose a basis of sections e1 up to ek uh, for the vector bundle on that open set, and then we get these gamma alpha betas representing the connection in coordinates, uh, then we find that our alpha beta jk is equal to partial j, meaning d by dxj, uh, of gamma alpha beta k minus partial k of gamma alpha beta j plus, uh, well let's write this as the sum over gamma of um, uh, gamma, uh, big gamma alpha, small gamma j, big gamma upper j beta k minus big gamma uh, alpha little gamma k, big gamma. Okay, so it involves, uh, it's linear in the first partial derivatives of big gamma, and then it's quadratic in the zeroth derivatives. Okay, um, so that's uh, what we need to know about curvature for the moment. Um, next section, uh, 1.4 on connections on tangent bundle Tx and torsion. So, so far I've been talking about connections on a general vector bundle E. Uh, now I want to take my vector bundle E to be the particular vector bundle Tx, the tangent bundle. Uh, so let's take x to be a manifold. Um, so that Tx over x is a vector bundle. Um, and uh, let nabla be a connection. on Tx. Um, so, well, there is then a natural tensor T, uh, which in tensor index notation uh, is the form T upper A lower BC. So it's got one tangent bundle index, two cotangent bundle indices. Um, uh, this is in sections of Tx tensored with lambda 2 of T star of X. So 
uh, it's anti-symmetric in the lower two indices. TABC is TA minus TABC. Um, so such that um, Write it as T upper A B C V B W C uh, is equal to Nabla V W A minus Nabla W V A minus V comma W A. So here I'm using the I'm going to start using the Einstein summation convention for index notation of tensors. So this means that if you re repeat an index, once lower, once upper, then you sum over that index over all i is 1 up to n, and being the dimension of x. Um, this has to be true for all vector fields v and w on x. OK, so uh, this is the derivative of w in direction v. That's the derivative of v in direction w. This is the Lie bracket of the vector fields v and w. So this is a bit like the, um, this equation here, except it's simpler, because this equation for curvature has two derivatives. Uh, the equation for torsion has only one. And the reason why this uh, makes sense only for connections on the tangent bundle not for connections on the general vector bundle, is that here I'm taking V and W to be both sections of the tangent bundle. If we had a general vector bundle, then well, V would be a section of the tangent bundle, W would be a section of the general vector bundle, but it wouldn't make sense to swap them around, because they'd be things of different kind. OK, um, so torsion is a kind of simpler invariant than curvature, uh, because curvature involves two derivatives, torsion involves only one. Um, and we call nabla uh, torsion free uh, if the torsion t is zero um, and and then for torsion free connections we have that um, nabla v of w minus nabla w of v is the Lie bracket v comma w for all vector fields v and w on x. Okay, uh, so well, um, if uh, in local coordinates, um, x upper 1 all the way to x upper n on x, uh, we have that uh, the derivative of the vector field d by dx i is a section of the tangent bundle. Uh, is equal to sum over all j and k is 1 up to n of gamma i j k these are Christoffel symbols um, times partial i dx j tensored with uh, dx k if that's true for Christoffel symbols gamma i j k then well, t i j k is equal to gamma i j k minus gamma i k j 
So I said before that the Christoffel symbols are not tensors, in that if you, uh, if you change coordinates from one coordinate system to another, then um, the Christoffel symbols change uh, by not, not just a linear transformation law, but a linear plus constant transformation law. However, if you do this anti symmetrization in the lower two indices, um, then the left-hand side is a tensor, because under the change of coordinates law for these things, uh, this has a linear transformation law uh, under where it just transforms according to the Jacobian of the change of coordinate matrix. Um, okay, so okay, so if nabla is torsion free, then gamma i j k is gamma i k j. It's symmetric in the bottom two indices. Um, So torsion is similar to curvature. Um, but uh, but it's simpler uh, because well T involves only one derivative and in fact no derivatives of the gamma ijk, but the curvature R involves two derivatives uh, and only one derivative of the Christoffel symbols gamma ijk. Um, and our view is that torsion-free connections, that is connections whose torsion is zero, are the best kind. So if you have to choose a connection on the tangent bundle, it's best to choose a torsion-free one if you can. Um, okay. Sorry? Can you pull down the oh, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, so now it turns out that if Nabla is a torsion free connection, uh, on the tangent bundle of X, uh, then its curvature R, uh, which you can write as a tensor in index notation as R, I, J, K, L. So one upstairs indices, three downstairs indices. That satisfies uh, two identities. Um, well, so the first Bianchi identity Um, R I J K L plus R I K L J plus R I L J K is equal to zero. So here I've taken uh, these things, I've done a cyclic permutation of the three downstairs indices. So JKL, KLJ, LJK is zero. Um, it's also true that, or well, for any curvature, it's anti-symmetric in the last two. So RIJ, KL is RIJ, is minus RIJ, LK. If you swap around the, these two indices, then um, you change the sign. So 
if you like, you could also add on the three more terms where you swapped these two rounds. So all of the, all the permutations of these with the negative sign, um, and you still get uh, essentially the same identity. That's first by Bianchi identity, um, and the second Bianchi identity. Um, which now is going to involve the derivative of R using the connection nabla. So nabla k R I J L M. So in this formula, the first two indices, the I and the J, are going to stay where they are. We're going to anti we're going to cyclically permute over the three indices, this derivative here and the last two. So this plus nabla L R upper I J uh, M and K plus nabla M of R upper I and J um, K L is equal to zero. Okay, so this is in uh, index notation. Um, so if nabla was not torsion free, then you'd have analogs of these equations which would also involve um, extra terms involving the torsion and its first and second derivatives, I think. Um, so the, the Bianchi identities assume this simple form. In, if t equals zero, then you, you, you lose a whole bunch of extra nasty terms. Um, OK, so these are going to be important later. Uh, now, uh, I've kind of cheated a bit here because I've taken the derivative of r supposedly using my connection nabla. Uh, so what I want to tell you is that if you've got a connection on the tangent bundle, then for free you get connections on all of the tensor bundles as well. And I've used the connections on the tensor bundles to differentiate the curvature here. So note here that um, a connection on the tangent bundle Tx uh, actually induces uh, connections um, on, um, well, firstly on the cotangent bundle T star of x, uh, and also uh, on uh, all tensor bundles. Big tensor with a k, lots of T of x tensored with big tensor to the L of T star of x. So you can tensor together as many copies as, as you like of the tangent bundle, and as many copies as you like of the cotangent bundle, you get a connection on these vector bundles as well, um, which uh, satisfying uh, obvious um, product rule conditions. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Uh, so, for example, um, there is a unique connection nabla primed on T star of x. So, in general, if I've got a connection nabla on Tx, I'm also going to write nabla for all of the other connections and all the tensor bundles as well. But just for now, I'm going to write nabla prime for the connection on T star of x so we can distinguish it. Um, so such that uh, for all V and W in the sections of Tx um, and um, alpha in the sections of T star of x, um, we have, well, um, the lead derivative in direction V of alpha dotted with W. So this is just a function we get by contracting the one form alpha and the vector field W is equal to nabla prime of V of alpha dotted with W plus 
alpha dotted with tabla v of w. Okay, so here, this is a one form. We've differentiated it in direction v to get another one form. We contract it with w, get a function. This is a, an equation in functions. On x. Um, so this is just a kind of product rule. If you differentiate alpha times w, uh, the answer should be what you get if you differentiate alpha times w and then plus alpha times the derivative of w in direction v. Um, now, if you used, there is a unique connection nabla primed which has the correct compatibility with nabla to make this true. If you choose a different connection nabla primed on this, this would be true plus some extra terms in uh, kind of well, trilinear in v and alpha and w, but with no derivatives in. Um, and in general, there's a, there are connections on all of these bundles such that uh, whenever you, uh, you take derivatives of sections of various bundles and then you use the natural contractions between tx and t star of x in all different ways you can imagine, uh, it sat what you get satisfies the product rules uh, in a natural kind of way. Okay, um, I think we're supposed to stop at this point. <laughs>